Hello! This video is a continuation of the previous one where I was talking about using Velostat, a pressure-sensitive material, to make uh, pressure-sensitive pads that could be used, for example, to create a velocity-sensitive pad for a musical instrument. And uh, here was the previous prototype, which is 2 by 2 centimetres. Uh, in size, it's made out of some sheets of rubber. Uh, if I take this top piece of rubber off, because it's just sitting on top at the moment, you can see underneath there is the velostat. That's the filling of the sandwich, as it were. If I now peel that material oops, off the base, you can see here that it is just, if it focuses on it, a very thin piece of flexible plasticky material. Very easy to cut. Just use a paper craft knife for that. And that is now sitting on top of this other piece of rubber, also cut with the same uh, craft knife, uh, with some conductive uh, copper tape strips either side to produce the connection um, between the, the circuit and that piece of Velostat material. Uh, I had initially tried gluing it down with some conductive glue. That didn't really work, so I ended up scraping it off. That's why you've got this sort of horrible discoloration there. Uh, but the prototype pad worked quite well, so I thought, well, uh, let's see if those results are repeatable. And as you can see here, I now have these eight pads and, of course, a spare here. Uh, one uh, very obvious thing about the new construction is that it's quite a bit bigger. This one is three by three centimetres and it's using three millimetre thick rubber sheeting instead of the two and a half millimetre thick rubber sheeting used in the prototype. Um, still got those little leads sold on the end there, so I can plug that into the breadboard here with these eight here. Uh, the other big construction change, uh, difference rather, is uh, I've glued the whole thing shut. I've put um, some super glue on the sides here, a bit of cyanoacrylate that I just held the thing together, put the super glue on, and then spread it out with a cotton bud, and that's on the two sides like that. You can see it's sort of reflective because it's got that uh, shiny cyanoacrylate dried super glue on it. There's no glue on these sides, just on the sides here with those conductive strips. Um, but as you can see here in circuit, uh, whereas the previous pad was measuring uh, around 15 to 20k when there was no pressure on it, these pads only measure 9k. And if I press it down, you can see that goes down to about 6k. And the previous pads were measuring about 4k when under pressure. Now I was expecting a higher resistance uh, when the pad is being pressed, or just a higher resistor in gen a resistance in general, because they are larger. There's more material for uh, for the current to flow through. There is a, you know, a higher resistance there. Uh, but I wasn't expecting the released resistance to actually end up being lower. And I think the reason for this is because these are glued shut, rather than the previous one, which was just lightly taped shut, uh, that means that this sort of neutral position is held down much more firmly, and you do end up with a lower resistance. However, the advantage of this is that the, um, the pads themselves seem to be a lot more stable. It is just between this sort of 6k and 8 or 9k in this case um, resistance that we're dealing with, and it does react quite quickly uh, to that change in resistance, whereas the previous pad, uh, when you pressed it and when you let go, it would spring all the way back to you know 20k before gradually creeping back uh, to about the 15k rest value. And I think that was because uh, with just a bit of tape on the sides, it wasn't really being allowed to return to this neutral position um, particularly well. Uh, particularly as when you put your finger on the pad and then you lift it off, because the pad slightly sticks to your finger, you end up uh, sort of lifting the pad slightly off. Hence, I think, that, that lower resistance. With these pads now being glued instead of taped with a gummy, uh, gummy sort of glue, um, I, I think that works a bit more reliably. And it certainly seems to in my testing. Um, but as I say, that's just this here on a breadboard. Uh, how does that, and measuring the values directly with this multimeter, how does that work in uh, a circuit that's translating this pressure into MIDI events? So uh, here I've got the eight pads connected to this microcontroller circuit, and that microcontroller is acting as a USB MIDI device, and it's constantly monitoring the state of these eight pads and determining when to send note on or note off events. Now, before this can be used uh, to, to send those events, it needs to be calibrated because each of these pads is somewhat different to the other. They've got different off resistances and on resistances. 
So to calibrate that, I first need to start by setting the uh, off resistance by pressing this button here, and that does it for all eight pads simultaneously. And now that it knows what the off resistance is, it can determine when you're touching any of the pads and from that calibrate the maximum pressure value. So here I'm just going to start with this one. And that's now calibrated, so if I now let go, it stops the note. If I tap it, you can hear it plays it. If I tap it hard, it's a bit louder if I tap it gently. It's quieter. So that's much the same as the previous circuit. And the uh, next thing I need to do is just calibrate all of the pads. So those are now all calibrated. And they can be played individually or as chords. So that seems to work pretty well. And uh, you can also select slightly more appropriate things for this sort of pad, I think, rather than a piano keyboard, you can play an organ, which is completely the wrong one, I meant to select this one, which is the drum kit. And that seems to work all right. I'll just return back to the piano because it's a bit less uh, abrasive. Um, you will notice, though, that there is a slight problem there, or rather I will notice this because I've got this in front of me, is that if I tap a note very quickly, it doesn't seem to register. Well, there it did, but uh, quite often, particularly if you hit it uh, very quickly and very lightly, it doesn't seem to register. However, if I still press it very lightly but hold, it still plays fine. And I was trying to figure out why this might be happening. Is this... Uh, is it the larger, thicker rubber that I'm using for the pads? Is that making them less sensitive? Is it the fact that I've glued it down the side? Is that making them stiffer and less responsive? But uh, ultimately, I don't think that's the problem. I don't think the problem is with the pads themselves. I think they're performing brilliantly. I think the problem here is the speed of the microcontroller. You see here, there are eight pads with eight analog values, and they're connected to the eight analog inputs on the microcontroller but it's only actually got one analog to digital converter inside it. And so what it has to do is it has to switch between which of the uh, particular pads it's sampling at any one time via a multiplexer. So the, the sampling rate is an eighth of what it was before. And I think it's this greatly reduced sampling rate that is causing it to miss very quick, very light note on events. And uh, I went and tried to optimise the code as much as I could. I tried to make sure that I was sampling as quickly as I could. Uh, I made the code to trigger sending that note on event as sensitive as it possibly could be, yet the response of this was still not very good. It still feels a bit laggy and imprecise. So I then changed it to instead of checking all eight pads, it only checked the first four, and that instantly made it better. And in fact, changing it to two made it even better still. And then going back to only checking the very first pad made, made it feel a lot more accurate, made it feel a lot more sensitive, and it never missed a tap, no matter how fast uh, or light it was. And I think this ultimately is going to be the limitation of the project, is the fact that this microcontroller can't sample all eight pads quickly enough. Now, for me, that's not really a problem, because what initially started this project was the idea of making a, a MIDI controller box that had eight potentiometers on it that could be used to set uh, control, send controller change messages for controlling the, synth, uh, the, param the uh, parameters of a synthesizer, and not so much to be used to, uh, to sort of play a musical instrument by striking pads. Uh, the reason I went down this route is I was originally just going to have some buttons to send uh, sort of program change messages. But when I looked uh, at what was commercially available, what sort of MIDI controllers were out there, they all seem to use this pad design, uh, where they've got eight pads uh, rather than just eight push buttons, which I suppose makes sense for them. Uh, but in my case, I don't think this microcontroller is going to be up to the task. Now, if I did want to go down this route, uh, I could, of course, add uh, an additional uh, analog to digital converter uh, that could perhaps that was able to sample these more quickly, uh, rather than using the one built into the microcontroller, or just adding more microcontrollers, perhaps using two of them uh, to, to measure, um, you know, each one measures just four pads, or four of them to measure just two pads each, or even 
a separate microcontroller for each pad. That would be the uh, the most performance, but of course the most expensive. You would of course not use a big microcontroller like this. You'd use uh, small smaller microcontrollers just uh, to measure each one. But uh, but so uh, yes, as I said, this this doesn't really uh, affect my project as a whole because I'm probably not going to be using these pads in it anyway. I just thought it was an interesting diversion to have a look at the properties of this Velostat material, and I think the um, the actual construction of the pads themselves, I think that idea is going to work pretty well. I think that that can uh, that can be used a, as a pad, uh, just maybe not with this microcontroller with this many pads at once. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, maybe maybe that's uh, been interesting or giving you some ideas for another project. But uh, anyway, catch you in the next video.